healthier, lives longer than the class which never dreams of possessing such things. Get yourself a statistician. So I turn from data analysis to two last sections of research design and methods before I give you a, a, a break. So hang with me, I know it's a lot. I talked to you about the anticipated outcome section. And I said very few grants include this, so I wanted to give you an example of how to write it. And for my grant, which was about that grant writing workshop, I wanted to tell them what outcomes, what could they expect if they funded me. So I wrote how, look, we anticipate, this was written when times were flush, then a lot more grants were funded. So I wrote, we anticipate an average of three to four people per session will get a fundable priority score. Two more will likely receive funding following a revision. Where do we come up with this projection? Based on the classes which we have been teaching over at Hopkins, which support these uh, types of projections. Since we're asking for funding for a five-year period, this would mean a total of approximately 60 underrepresented minority scientists would achieve grant funding as a result of this project. And then I was really carried away by my own rhetoric, and I wrote, and there is more, almost like one of these TV commercials. I wrote, furthermore, we anticipate the following. We recognize the number of funded investigators may fall short for the following reasons. However, to ensure, it, it doesn't even matter if some investigators drop out. You know why it doesn't matter? Because we built into this grant writing program an additional component that if you take part in our grant writing program, the rules of this program are that you must go back to your home institution and act as a mentor to someone else. So it's almost like a pyramid effect for building this whole cadre of funded investigators. So this will have sustainability built in after the original five years of funding runs out. So it was the most passionate argument that I could make. And I tell you this to tell you that this anticipated outcomes, and again, I wanted you to see how to write it, it's pretty straightforward writing. The reviewers just love this section. Um, and I would share with you, before we look at potential problems, just as an aside, because I think it's um, really important. Um, the reviewers love the way this grant was written, which is why I've used it as an example. They, they loved the way it was written, but they didn't fund me, <laughs> which was really quite miserable and difficult to take. Um, the reason they didn't fund me, so I use this as an example for a few reasons. Um, they had one very, um, one salient criticism, although at the time, I assure you, I didn't think it was a salient criticism. <laughs> I was like anyone else, I was like, what? Yeah, they obviously didn't understand the grant. And we all feel that way. Um, if you haven't yet submitted a grant and read a summary statement, um, and the first time you submit one and don't get a grant, I think it's almost a universal reaction. You didn't understand, it was you know, obvious. But the, um, the criticism, and actually it was a, a, a very appropriate criticism in hindsight. The criticism was, you know, well, this is really well put together. It's just, you know, really, this is so easy to read. It's just, you know, really, this, this one's a pleasure to go through, da 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 da, -da. However, however, all this great stuff that these, the, this team is proposing to do, it was all carried out at Johns Hopkins Medical Institutions. What makes this team of investigators think that everything that they've been doing at Hopkins would necessarily be transferable to an underrepresented minority institution, which is the, um, you know, the point of this particular grant. And boy, we never saw that coming, not one of us. We were just so completely completely shell-shocked by that criticism. And I, you know, in retrospect, it's an obvious criticism. But as I said, that's in retrospect. At the time, where did that come from? <laughs> so I share this with you for a couple of reasons. Number one, to make the point that I think about grants a lot. My job is to support the research careers of our junior faculty. Um, and so I think about grants a lot. And the grant that I probably wanted most in, in my uh, and certainly one of the grants that I wanted most, I really wanted this grant a great deal, of course, was the one that you, that you didn't get. You know, we came in number two, which is even more galling. So it's like you're the bridesmaid. <laughs> and we couldn't revise and resubmit. It was a, a call for proposals. So we just, you know, we just lost out. And I make this point to you because I know that, um, you know, the, the, grants, the grants climate, the grants world, it's a, it, it's a 
a rough climate. It's a, it, it's a rough game to play. Um, most people have at least some experience with the same thing I'm telling you about. Most people don't get funded every time we write a grant. And so I share this with you deliberately to tell you that um, it is universal. We, we all go through this. It isn't fun, uh, but it's definitely, it's universal. So don't try not to take it personally. <laughs> I can say that now. Try not to take it personally if this does happen to you. Um, doesn't mean you have to find another career. It means you have to revise the grant. <laughs> but it doesn't reflect upon your ability to have a successful research career, particularly in today's environment. So we go from anticipated outcomes to potential problems. And I use this little graphic of the tortoise and the hare to make the obvious point. Boy, things don't always turn out the way we think they will. And we all remember that Aesop's fable of the tortoise and the hare who were running a race. And of course, everyone thought that the rabbit was going to win the race. How could a tortoise win a race against a rabbit? But the tortoise won the race. Things don't always turn out the way we think. Nowhere is this more so than in the world of science. So what we want to do in this particular section of the grant is talk about the problems we anticipate and what we'll do should they arise. As I said before, we include problems that we can address. Problems with methods. If there's a problem with this method, we'll use an alternative method. Or it may be difficult to interpret our uh, particular data, so this is what we'll do. Possible different solutions to achieving our aims. We'll try this approach. If it doesn't work, we'll do this. So things that we can address. Here's an example of appropriate writing. We anticipate that our grant writing workshop will meet the needs of the majority of participants, most of whom will be first-time applicants. However, some participants may have tried unsuccessfully to obtain grant support, and they may prefer a faster course of instruction, focusing on how to revise an application. In order to meet the needs of this group, our anticipated approach to solving this likely dilemma is that we'll have an inclusive three-week short tutorial focusing on how to revise a grant, which will run concurrently with the main arm of the study on how to write the grant in its entirety. So potential problem, solution, problem, solution. What we do not do is shoot ourselves in the foot. We don't go overboard. When I say potential problems, I don't mean that we give them a list of 10 or 12 potential problems. Because again, when we look at a list of 10 or 12 potential problems, you look at it and you think, oh my gosh, all those potential problems, this thing has no chance in the world of working. <coughs> Be moderate. A problem or two with each A. You know, maybe at the most four or five potential problems in the entire grant. Don't give them more than that. And again, unfixable problems. The most common one you see is <laughs> there are some limitations to this proposal. The first one is that we may have difficulty accruing enough patients to meet the requisite or needed sample size in order to obtain statistical significance. That's not a problem. <laughs> That's like the end of the research, right? So we never talk about that. Every clinical subjects study that you do, you're going to have problems with accruing patients. We know that. That's just a fact. So address it on the front end. Don't get caught on this one. Over enrollment, what you'll do if patients drop out, address this one. It is addressable. If you don't have enough patients here, there are other you know, hospitals, medical schools. Have those collaborations working before you propose the grant. And finally, a couple of last uh, points to make about methods. So we've talked about design, the interesting, brief but interesting part. Methods is really pretty straightforward. We are going to describe and reference all new procedures, explain why they're better than the current procedures. We're going to describe and reference procedures that our reviewers may not know. Um, if it's a standard procedure, you we'll probably just reference it. I wouldn't describe it in detail. If you're able to include quality control measures to ensure high quality data, that is very attractive to a reviewer. 